Hello and welcome to Everyday Matters, a new show which is on Sangat Television. It's on live every Tuesday, 7 to 8 p.m. Now, it's a phone-in show, so the number you need to call is 0121 516 2828. It's 0121 516 2828. And what we do on a weekly basis, we talk about topics that you don't normally talk about in the Sikh community. Um, and so really, it's, it's a show where you dial in and express your views and your opinions on these topics of importance. So today we're talking about alcohol addiction within the Sikh community um, and how badly it affects the Sikh community. I think there was a BBC report that was saying a third of people in the Sikh community have someone in the family um, or friends that have, have a serious alcohol addiction and, and the issues with that and the addictions, addi uh, the issues for families and etc going forward. So Bhavirkul, welcome to the show again. Michael, Hello. Um, so tell me a bit more about alcohol addiction and why it's so devastating on Sikh community. I think um I think generally speaking there there are a lot of uh, individuals who take alcohol and they might take it for different reasons um, but um, from some people's perspective is seen that alcohol in Asian communities the done thing whilst our faith doesn't actually promote it and it it's completely says, banned in the yeah, community. It's completely in the, in the bunny it's actually said uh, n no alcohol no meat um, and things like that so you're total vegetarian and uh, things like that so but on saying that like we mentioned in the last program um, about 80% of our Sikhs are not on the Sikhs uh, and therefore they 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 are individuals who do drink alcohol uh, on a regular basis uh, but the concerns that are coming out is the impact of the alcohol and what we want to try and do today is raise the awareness of um, the, uh, what the alcohol actually does to your mind, to your body and to your organs and also how that translates into um, destroying relationships, destroying families and destroying communities. So regarding alcohol and stuff like that, some people say, oh, it's OK, he's having a few here and it's just parties. For example, the party, the, the party culture that we have now, weddings, for example, it's, it's rare to get a wedding where you'll go just to the Godwara, you'll have the Godwara function and you won't have the evening function where it's free alcohol, free tables, free drinks, whatever you want. Yeah, uh, I think I think there is a kind of a tradition that all oh, alcohol is the one thing that you, you let your hair down and uh, you know have a party. But uh, the, uh, the outcomes of alcohol abuse is having a very negative impact on family life and the community um, and one of the real purposes of today's discussion is really to understand the impact that alcohol has on your mind and on your other organs and we really want to bring it to the attention of those who are drinking alcohol or thinking about drinking alcohol or want to move away from alcohol so you're saying drinking alcohol what do you, what do you say is is classified as the drinking alcohol it, abuse sort of like for example in the, in the community i know there was a study saying that if you're drinking one to two um i don't know two units a day is almost seen as the limit that you're supposed to have which is one pint of beer or one glass of wine and one single spirit yeah um that ain't gonna happen in our community for sure right uh it's interesting you highlighting the unit concept because uh, even in the dispatch program they highlighted alcohol as one of the key issues and they said that people don't really understand the unit concept and they will over drink because mm -hmm. um, in, in, in a glass of wine there'll probably be two or three units um so i think in the asian community there is a tendency for people to drink too much alcohol what I would like to really focus and, and, and draw back, I know we understand there is an issue, um, but we won't really want to understand where does the issue start. Mm -hmm. So what are your views on where the issue starts? Because you're saying, oh, it's a, a peer group, socialising. Yeah, I mean, for, for me, like well, I'm older now, I was 41, but when I was younger, um, well, even still now, we, I used to remember just binge drinking almost especially with with friends so much and, and families for example it used to be the norm sort of thing i remember going going on it, it was for then it was it was pretty fun going on binging binge sessions in in derby for example with my cousins i go to the pub and i'll have eight nine pints i'll be sick vomiting and then you know and then i'll continue afterwards because i've cleared my system yeah and then you know i'll have another four or five but the, the thing with me that affected me because okay you can have your fun times there but with me, and, and like a lot of people, my hangovers were, were really bad, horrific. They'd be two days long almost. And you'd feel really bad on that front. And that's the thing that actually pulled me away from mm -hmm. 
um, drinking on a regular basis. Yeah, and I, I have actually observed within my community uh, people who drink and people who don't and the difference in their behaviours and things like that. But I think the key thing to understand is when you do drink alcohol, it has an immediate effect on your body. And the immediate effect is that 10% of the alcohol will be absorbed in your stomach and that will go straight to your head to your yep. brain uh, and the other uh, and also to your spinal cord so the two key areas of your body that are affected by alcohol is straight into your brain and straight into your body I don't know about spinal cord being affected spinal cord what it does it, it actually dumbs the the uh, what they call neurotransmitters and therefore the communication uh, through your body will be uh, slower much slower okay. uh, so the messages that your the cells are sending out will be much slower than if you don't drink oh yeah? so that's probably why you get people stumbling and, and yeah, stumbling is one one element of it and and the other uh, is if 20% goes like that immediately into your stomach and into your brain and and also into your spinal cord which are very key areas of the organ that can't re be replaced they don't yep. replenish themselves once the cells in your brain die they don't replenish themselves okay. and similarly if your nervous system in your spinal cord is damaged in any way uh, again that will have a physical impact on you for life so people I don't think realize that the other 80 uh, 80 percent actually goes into your small intestine okay yeah and that's where it sits and again because the heart is actually doing what it's supposed to do is pump it will pump the alcohol around your body mm -hmm. yeah and it will make it go around your body so it will affect every organ in your body so the, one of the things that, that you might say well i'm having a drink or having one or two drinks it's not really having an impact on me I, people say it's t i know sorry to put in, but a lot of people say oh that one drink it it levels me out it sorts me out in the evening right after my I, food it I just think, takes yeah. the edge of, the, i always hear that the edge of it yeah it takes the edge off what because they've been stressed at work yeah, and therefore right. they want to relax now an alternative uh, method or a tool in your uh, toolbox might be instead of going for that alcohol drink or the the wine bottle um, go for a run or yeah. go swimming or do something different do exercises which is going which is actually going to create the positive endorphins which is going to lift you up whereas alcohol actually is um is a dis depressant it actually creates a, a, a dumbing down of your um your signals in your communications that it numbs all the stuff that you're going on in your body yeah i think speaking of alcohol and stuff like that and the way it numbing your body i remember that when I was at stage when sometimes I wouldn't sleep that well. Mm -hmm. I'd always think that alcohol would sort of help me. Relax. Drinking a few shots quickly within the space of a few minutes would put me to sleep. But I remember then you'd wake up and then it would be really, you, you wouldn't have, you, you'd be fine. You think you've mm -hmm. got slept through, but when you'd wake up, yeah, you'd have a hangover. B, you're probably at the limit. But C, the thing is you don't sleep properly. Although you think that it's putting you to sleep, it's not actually proper deep sleep. Yeah. It affects your... I think, I think what it does do, it does... Um, it, what it what it will do at the alcohol will heighten whatever emotions and feelings that you're experiencing yeah yep. for instance if for instance you are feeling low the mm. alcohol will make you feel even lower even though you might not realize that okay. yeah if you're feeling happy you will become you'll feel even more happier yeah so it's like uh, alcohol is considered a, like a reward system like you said it's interesting that you made a comment that oh it, uh, it takes the edge of yeah, edge the of evening it, yeah. which uh, which is an interesting way of putting it um but the, the key thing is well why do you need that alcohol to do the take the edge of your evening wouldn't it be better to sit down and relax and meditate yeah. or do the gardening or something like that? I think it's, a, the, the, it's the issue is then it's, yeah, it's the edge sort of thing. I think that's why we're saying that the more I think about it, the more you'd understand with, especially the older generation, when, when the older generation, you know, there's been reports like when the older generation came to the UK, they didn't have great jobs. It was manual labor. Yes. They didn't almost fit into the communities because of the lack of English and, you know, the racism that was there and the, the cultures that was around and it was a new culture for the english people seeing asian people mm. come here as well so they'll stick together they'll work them hard jobs in the foundry for example working in a foundry you're going to be exhausted you're going to be really dehydrated and thirsty mm. at the end of that and, and the thing is after you've worked so hard it's probably the, the scene as a thing to replenish them and to relax them was to go to the pub the reward system yeah, yeah. the pub every evening socializing yeah. but then a lot of the older generation it's so hard for them because they've been going to the pub every evening they're getting to the fact where they'll be 
working, drinking, sleeping, working, drinking, sleeping. Although you think they're working hard during the day and mm. burning them that kind of them, them and that energy, um, it's an addiction. It was it the addiction is, to alcohol. It, it is got, actually got through life. Yeah, it is actually highlighted that uh, when people did work in foundries and factories, there was a tendency because they were thirsty because of the type of work they did. They went for the beer. Yeah. Yeah, because it's a cooling thing. It, it, it replenishes. However, in the long term, what it's doing is actually impacting on your key organs. That, that, that one of your key organs is your liver. Yep. Yeah, and the liver actually does uh, nearly it's got something like 5,000 functions that it does in the body which people are not aware of so the importance of it but it's also it's a silent killer because it will never show that your liver is not working effectively because it will always work for you even when it's 98 uh, percent uh, dysfunctional it'll still work and nobody will know that you've got a really um, faulty yeah, liver. That's a, 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 a doctor said to us uh, once that um, when the liver goes it just goes like that and you yes. can't you can't do anything about it you can't repair it or anything it's gone no no the, the liver actually is only only one of the organs that actually does replenish it itself it does actually re regenerate sorry itself yeah. right that's the only organ that does do that however because of the intake of toxins intake of alcohol or intakes of excessive food or you know f fatty foods will actually have a, a negative impact on the liver because it's really working hard in order to clean your system yep. clean the blood and because of that it, what it does is supposed to be a clear clean purple texture smooth yeah. but it, when it when it becomes um, well uh, liver infection it'll, it'll, it'll actually cause scaling on the on the liver yeah and that scale thing will actually can actually turn into cancer as well okay. so so I think the key thing what we want to emphasize to our audience really to the Sangat is that although people think oh I'm okay right I can drink so many pints of uh, alcohol it doesn't really affect me because I can take my drink yeah that is the words that people yeah, use yeah, I can, I can take my drink or I can drink somebody under the table is a concept of how look how good I am yeah. that I can hold my drink um, the real impact is on the body. Now you've got to love your body because that's the only body you've got, mm. right? And you've got to actually live with it the rest of your life. Now by actually taking alcohol on a regular basis without understanding the impact on your brain, the impact on your key organ, it is the liver, it does affect your heart, your kidneys as well. What you're doing is actually affecting your longevity of your life. So, you know, it's a live um, phoning show. So the number is 0121 516 2828. That's 0121 516 So, just speaking about alcohol and how it affects you physically as well, you know, with the liver diseases and stuff like that in your body, what about the mental effects, A, for the person and B, for their friends and especially their family that are affected with someone who's living with, with alcohol issues? I think uh, it, it, many there are many cases of domestic violence and majority of them caused by the spouse being drunk comes home um, and and I don't know that the, the situations are quite complex so different situations happen but majority of them are attributed to drink yeah yeah um, so therefore you can actually destroy your family your marriage by a drink situation like that for instance you might say well i'm stressed out so i need a drink to calm down yeah uh to calm me down but the, the effects of it can be on your emotions you can get either get very angry or you get happy it can affect your judgments as well yeah for yeah. instance like the drink driving element yeah? yeah people think oh well i've only had so many uh, beers uh, it shouldn't really affect you it does it does affect you and you will actually get points on your license and you lose your like license yeah, yeah, so in, license. in scotland scotland's got a new low weight even one pint of alcohol regular strength alcohol you're yeah. over the limit okay but in the uk it's two pints is the limit uh, yeah. it's touch and go now, this disclaimer i'm not just saying to, to advocate to drink drive mm -hmm. but uh, you obviously any, any alcohol is bad in your system if you're mm -hmm. going to drink mm -hmm. Uh, and, and thinking about drinking and driving it it does have an effect but you know maybe they need to lower the, lower the limit on that front but like I'll, you know drink driving used to 
is now a, seen as a really taboo sort of thing. You know, people who drink driving, it's sort of shame on the... Well, I, it, well it is, because you're not just um, putting your life at risk, you're putting somebody else's life yeah. at risk. And that many, many a time that's happened where people have found to be drink driving and they've killed a pedestrian on, on the lights when they, the lights were stopped. Yep. So there's many, many a situation like that. But one of the things that you were highlighting is that alcohol does actually... Um, um, actually intensify some of the emotions that you might be feeling mm -hmm. so let's say you might be frustrated about something uh, and that anger will come out yep. but I, th I think the one thing what I would like to focus on and is around young people drinking there there is a, a high emphasis now that there's a lot of young people are drinking because of situations they're finding themselves which are so stressful at school doing A-levels, doing the degree, and we need to actually view that uh, in more detail, I think. Mm -hmm. So young people, what age group would you say young people are, would be classified well, as? Well, the young people, what what they're saying, in, uh, there's a dispatches program on alcohol, and I would actually recommend people actually um, search it and that'd Google. That would be on 4OD then, yeah, Channel 4OD. So, so yeah, so look at that. And one of the things they were saying that, the the development of the mind isn't complete until about uh, until the adult is until they're about 25 yep. yeah 25 years old so your brain is still growing and it's evolving and changing however if you start drinking let's say young people start drinking at 15 without the parents knowing or 16 yep. right what happens to their brain the brain then starts to think well i don't need to do anything because they're getting the stimulus elsewhere yep. and the brain stops working or evolving and changing in the growth stops okay right? i didn't know that so therefore if you see a, a young child and this is actually in course if you see a young child who's been drinking their growth will be um uh, won't be as much as a child who hasn't drank okay yeah so they'll be much taller and things oh, like okay, that, so it, things like that. Okay. so it affects your height affects your general demeanor the other thing that affects is because their brain isn't evolving and growing or stops growing at the same pace as a person who doesn't drink they will be uh, actually marginalizing themselves through education mm. so their learning ability will go down as well okay. so at 15 they will struggle with their studies they will struggle with their GCSEs and they will definitely struggle with their A-levels however a same child who is not drinking will actually uh, generally fly through the A-levels and, and go to University Oxbury and Cambridge and things like that so it does have an impact although we say drinking's uh, I think is ages 18 you know yes. before you drink but there are many a child who drinks at 14 15 yep. you know that sort of age group um, personally I think people need to pay attention to that, that in America really they've got it 21 isn't it the legal limit is to drink sorry in America it's 21 okay so perhaps we need yeah, to look review at increase, that yeah, as to why they've got 21, 21 and we got 18, 18 yeah, which is a big difference yeah? then. Uh, and, and we need to look at that um, I think the other one so that for me it's the young people shouldn't really be drinking yeah 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 because one is not good for your brain it's mm. not actually it's actually stopping your brain growing yep. yeah so you're uh, you're actually marginalizing the growth of your brain which will have an impact on your learning which will have an impact on you uh, uh, maybe obtaining that degree which will have an impact on your uh, stability in you know getting the type of house you want or the career you want yep. or the job you want to hold so it has a, it has a ripple effect all the way through your life okay so talk about alcohol on the personal point of view what see what what effect will it have on say families for example that just got used to a person saying oh he's just drinking and he's just in the corner because you've got two types of people and you'll have the ones that are just shy and will just withdraw yeah. Or the ones that have become even more abusive and, st and, and stuff like that. Obviously, it affect them because it affect their only potential. Maybe as a, as a man of the house, they won't work. But it can, it can also be both ways around. You have women in the community that, that drink, yeah. and that's a big I thing th now. I think, I think the first thing is to recognise that that person is drinking over excessively, yeah, and they can be an addiction. So what, how would you say you could recognise someone's over drinking? Would it say it's affecting them work-wise? 
it's affecting it their family relationship yeah it will affect their work uh, for instance they won't be able to hold down the jobs they want to hold down mm -hmm. yeah their mood swings will be much more aggressive from yeah. one was from silent to you know angry and things like that or not saying anything and then suddenly you know the straw that breaks the, uh, the camel's back con yep. concept um, but they will also um, will have um, issues around how they're managing themselves as well if they accept this is about excessive drinking and things like that but i think i'm i'm not the ex i'm actually talking from a patient's perspective yeah. or a general viewer perspective i think we will have experts who will be talking about alcohol yeah. on here in the future i think for me if for instance in your family you're finding that your partner is drinking excessively i think it's important when they're sober you have that conversation with them see yeah? it's, it's see some because obviously if it, one in three have this issue even if you speak to that person when they're sober someone who's got an alcohol addiction which is an addiction and i think people need to uh, get over the fact and i think that that oh they'll just they can stop overnight no. because if you're addicted to alcohol you actually need medication to get off yeah because you can't just wean yourself off normally 99 98 percent of the times you will need medication to wean yourself off the drugs off the medicine off the um, alcohol because it's a drug yeah um, it is a drug it's a it's classed as a legal drug really because you are allowed to drink i think that, but the problem is you know even though it's classed as a drug and you need to get that mm. help you have to go to the, the, the person who's got the addiction will have to go to the doctors and say i need help and i've got an alcohol problem i think one of the things you'll find that people who drink will never yeah, really confess that they're they're addicted to it yeah because they they like They've, they they, they will always the say oh can i can give it up whenever i yeah. want i don't want to give it up things like that they will have that mannerism or behavior yeah i can give it up anytime yeah, yeah? however alcohol itself is addictive it is like a, it's forming a habit yeah mm. it's it's like a reward system let's say if you eat, if you like chocolate and you have the first bar of chocolate and you think oh my god no, i think i'll do with another one because of the the chemicals that are inside the chocolate yeah. that will cr make you crave for more similarly uh, alcohol is the same right food will give you a certain kick in your body and and will send satisfaction to your brain alcohol is probably 10 times as much you'll send that satisfaction to your brain yep. but it also sends satisfaction through your your body and makes you feel relaxed make you feel that you're more confident to talk yep. about things when you're shy you're you're more um emotionally you know alert or whatever you know it can it can do a number of things to your body yep. and you actually think this is a good thing it makes me feel good i want to have your body will be cra even though you might not want it your body will start craving for it your body will say oh i want alcohol i want that drink because it sends the certain type of chemicals to your brain and what the brain will crave for it more so the more you drink the worse it's going to get the situation so say for example you've got that young person who's saying okay and their family finally got them to say you've got a problem and you get to the doctors the doctors will prescribe them either they'll provide them med there is medication that you can take that will mm -hmm. i think if you have they're establishing yet that if you do have start drinking again you will vomit you'll be sick on that uh but again, it's up to the patient, the person, the alcoholic, mm. the one with the abuse, that whether he'll take them that medicine because they'll know I, the effect of that. I think it's recognizing. I think the first thing with any any addiction or any that addiction of overeating or chocolates or whatever, um, I think you first need to recognize it. Yep. And you, you need to own it. Don't don't give the, that that responsibility to somebody else. Say, oh, my wife makes me drink because yeah. she she's always nagging me. Mm. yeah she's always telling me i'm not but it's funny say so you say your yeah. wife's nagging you and stuff like that and then it's an excuse for drinking which is not in our community yeah you'll say that oh it's the wife problem that's you, nagging the you. thing is that it's a blame thing so it hold hold responsibility but no, yourself but in our community if, if people say oh the, it's, it's the wife that's doing that it, it's, it's seen as fine as an excuse for them to get away from their wives and have that drinking sort of which is yeah, instead of is. talking yeah, I, I think the key thing is i i, I think uh, last time the lady came uh, lady uh, one of the uh, phone calls was a lady saying that uh, whatever people say to me I accept and I, w I will still worship the person or something yeah. and I'm thinking well you can do that to a certain level but you got to be first of all I was I would say recognize it own it and then do something about it yeah and then then hold yourself accountable yeah okay so talk about recognize the first step um, again it's a phony show so it's 0121 five one six two eight two eight that's oh one two one five one six two eight two eight so if you're going through this whole 
if you if you think you know if there's anyone in your family or you need any help or in, of of helping someone to get that first step or if you think someone in your family has got that addiction or they have that addiction and you, you've got issues with you know what's going on please do call in and we can try to help and point you to the right direction and get you get help and guidance after the show if you leave your details but you know it's getting that recognition and making someone to actually recognize it so what you know how can you get someone to say that yeah i've got this problem if they keep denying the fact that they've got this problem I again it's, it's i think when they keep denying it i think then i think when the doctors come into play they will actually say things like that and mr singh right if you keep drinking the way you're drinking like a fish this is what's happening to your organs mm -hmm. yeah and one of the tests i would ask every person who drinks yep. is to have a liver test yeah. And you can get a liver test from the GP. You can when get your liver test done by the GP. Uh, and basically what it does, they'll do a blood test on you and they will show you the the the, the volume of alcohol or the impact it's having on your liver. Yeah. Uh, like I said, liver is one of the things, like you, you actually said, that, oh, this person um, just died just like that. Yeah. And then they said, oh, it was the liver. Yeah, that is because the liver will actually keep functioning yeah? yeah, irrespective of how much stuff, uh, rubbish you throw at it, like alcohol, uh, drugs, or you know whatever uh, yeah. you're doing uh, to it, it, it'll actually keep functioning until it will just collapse, and then you will die. Yeah, yeah? it's a bit like George Best when, when he obviously went through his drinking problem, yeah. and, he, and he, then he stopped. Yeah, um, and it was fine. It was fine, and then all of a sudden it was gone and you could just see him in hospital and he passed away yeah. within a few months. Yeah, and the, and the, and the key thing about it, and I think everybody needs to understand that alcohol influences your brain. It influences different parts of your brain. Brain it affects your frontal cortex. It affects different parts of it, which have your. It can actually change your behaviour. You become like Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah. Yeah. So your personality changes. Your character will change. And and the key thing is that you need to recognise that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't recognise it, somebody else can tell you. You might not believe them. Yeah right and if you're actually in that sangat or that group or the peer group that actually saying ikhur uh, glasi lala the one for the road yeah. yeah it's always one for the road at, yeah. at every event well don't do one for the road because what you're doing is one for the grave well okay i'll give you an example when i whenever i've gone to even to a friend's place or something like that if, I, if i've gone to a party and i say mm -hmm. oh i'm not drinking mm -hmm. what are you Come on, what are you? You know, yeah. what the hell? I think, I think is that sort of philosophy. But then I used to be the same person. Say, go and have one. It's just when you get slightly older, you say, oh, don't go and have one. Yeah. Or something happening in your life. I think there is a social. There's a, there's a social structure, uh, and and this happens within the younger community as well, where they all meet up at the pub, have a uh, uh, whatever food to eat, and with that they'll have alcohol, beer, whatever they have, right? First of all, they, they they're in that group which actually. Uh, supports that yeah. behavior yeah so they they will they're prone to do that so you have to break f your cycle from that group and attach yourself to another group who is much better for you mm -hmm. yeah in uh, in perhaps going to the gym and getting a group who walk, goes for walks or climbing mountains etc but I think you need to do that but the thing I keep coming back to is alcohol affects your brain your brain is an organ that doesn't regenerate. You're killing the cells in your brain, your neurotransmitters. Yep. Um, alcohol destroys your liver. However, liver is the one that regenerates. However, it regenerates very slowly, yep. right? If you sort of say, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dry out from my alcohol thing, it'll take nearly a year for the liver to recover. Oh, well, I didn't know that. So it's not a, it's not a thing that will recover straight away. Oh, I've done three months. Oh, my liver's okay. No, it takes time, and it's very very important that individuals understand you're not just you're not just destroying your life. You're destroying your family's life. But see, that's yeah. You're saying that, and if that person could make could see from a sober point of view of what's happening to their family. Yeah. But unfortunately, sometimes it gets a situation where people don't care about their family or their kids or anything like. It's just the fact that five o'clock they've got the shakes and they need to drink and that's the point what i'm trying to say if you if you're getting to five o'clock and you're thinking oh you've done your work you've worked hard you provide for your family and you, and you need that drink you've got to try and admit that you need help you need to go to somebody yeah and and the type of help, help you get if you've got your doctor you can refer you to you know medication support groups, support yeah. groups as well but you've got rehab and this rehab thing is really annoying for me as well because there's rehab things and in our community there's it's seen as bsd has gone to a rehab center you know to try and get that move that we need to get away from they, it's okay. that, I think it's, they call it bitch tea when you try to just eat vegetarian food or go for a jog and things like that people yeah. don't I think 
I think the key thing I said last time as well, it doesn't matter what the community thinks, it's what you think. Yep. And one of the things is, uh, and in the Barney it says, get your house in order right and i always thought it was a house your home that you live in yeah it's not it's actually your body is that okay so this is your house yep. this is where you live in you need to get that in order and if you if you need to be healthy have a good life uh in the future and not have things like strokes and heart attacks and liver failure and you know uh, brain hemorrhage or you know all those things you you've got control over that by drinking you add into the diseases of the future yeah yeah but the fact that you're drinking, it'll actually scale your, your liver. Yeah, you think. And the cancer. liver, that scale that you have on your liver, or uh, the scar, as they call it, can turn into cancer, and that will kill you. Yeah. See, like I was saying about, do you think, it's not basically at all going to think about stuff like rehab and admitting you've no. got a problem. Because at the end of the day, you've, you've got to think about your own kids. Um, whether you've got issues with your wife or with anyone else in your family, or even with... It doesn't matter. Is, your body and you've got to think if you've got your kids your kids gonna need you so if you can make that first step and and seek that help forget what anyone else says you know it's a few weeks it's six i think it's about three up to i think it's six weeks or three up to three months rehab or, yeah i have sorry i don't have that knowledge yeah. yet or you can you know and even if rehab such a problem you even get people now that can come to your house and, and and do that sort of program and with that with the rehab centers i know you'll get your you'll get medicine day at night you'll get support and the groups that you get so even if you think someone in your family is, oh, they're never going to stop, it's always worth trying to, instead of just accepting this how it's going to be, think about, you can make, think about that person's life, and think about the kids and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You can do that move. You yeah. can get away from it. No, but of course, what they, what you say is sangha. If, if that person... You've got, the, you've got to have the right sangha. You've got to have the, you've got to actually, for instance, if, for instance, you understand that this alcohol is not good for me, uh, and I even take it in social areas because so, it's not good for me, you really should be influencing because if you care enough for your friends you should be influencing them to stop yeah but yeah? i think yeah that's the thing though if you're in that thing where you've got a, that it's weird like i've got another cousin of mine and like you know he's just had a, a kid and i was like wow he's changed completely because he'd be like come on drink up drink up drink up but it's now i'm not drinking now i've got you know yeah responsibility yeah responsibility is how he's just changed i was like yeah. oh, i was like what the you know what the hell's happened so here? the younger child yeah the child actually brings that responsibility to be more responsible to yourself and to others but if someone's got that alcohol problem you, you know as someone who's who's suffered or is suffering from that you've got to think that you've got your responsibility your kids are going to need a dad yeah. Or, a, or, or or even a mum because it's not just there's no point us we're talking about men it's women, a, women it's a huge women problem drink. in the Sikh community there's women a huge drink. amount of divorces yeah. Yeah. now and issues that are happening from women that have got drink problems that are just being hidden under the carpet as yeah. soon as they get married it's free you know they can drink on that front and mm. for, instead of hiding it with their partner I think yeah I think I think the issue is it, I, individuals drink and I think it's important to recognize that it's not just saying men drink it's generally known as men drinking and coming home etc um, drunk um, I think the key thing is that society where we say make sure you are in the right sangha that's one element however if you look at advertising yeah yeah uh, I know they're putting a curb on advertising and etc regarding drink but they're still not putting warning signs that alcohol can kill yeah alcohol is a drug they don't say it. tobacco is now they can say the tobacco can kill no, all they say they, is don't drink, say they just say drink responsibly yeah but then that's like gambling gamble yeah. you know when the fun stops stops but that's not really a, a yeah. clear message that and, I, and i think and i think we need to this this actually goes wider so it's not just the family drinking the pressure there 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 is media that's throwing you know social social element or drink promoting it yeah you know and there's more uh not drinking within pubs there's drinking in in in, 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 the, home in, in, in the home yeah. yeah which is actually quite getting quite excessive um and people sort of said oh we'll have some food i'll have a drink etc so that's sort of kind of a hidden hidden problem as well um but more so one of the things is that in in europe the European Commission has a general report around alcohol and how it impacts the growth of uh, young people and also how it, it actually um, impacts on people uh, keeping their jobs and having good health etc. Yeah. Um, however in England although the findings were very transparent um, the British government is saying we're going to do our own research yeah. <laughs> on alcohol when there's evidence there already. Um, so one and of maybe the it's yeah again it's lobbying. It's the influence of you know breweries for example. Yeah. 
how much they bring into the economy. So it's yeah. almost like a double-edged sword. They don't yeah. want to lose the brewery side of it. Yeah. They want they want people to drink, which a lot of people do drink responsibly, but in our community, they don't. Mm -hmm. Majority, a lot of them, a lot, huge percentage don't. I mean, a third, you know, out of all the ethnic minorities, the English, white English, all the other groups, you know, we've got that problem, the alcohol problem, that we, you wouldn't even get in the, you know, in the Hindu community, you wouldn't get that, in the Muslim community, you wouldn't get that, but it's, it's just our community that's got this our problem. Our community does have a problem, and I think the sooner we own it, the better our community will be, because it's not just in England, it's wider across the world, and yeah. there's more issues happening in India, which people need to review, and what's happening out there with young people. Um, coming back, I think this European Commission report is actually quite key, because it highlights alcohol as a main, it can kill, yeah yeah and people don't realize that it actually can kill you i think also from alcohol you also get well you get two scales you can get obesity as well yes which is the second highest uh, danger of cancer killer of cancer uh, reason uh, risk of cancer is mm -hmm. obesity i think the, the real thing that people ignore with alcohol is the psychological effect that it has to on family members as well mm -hmm. maybe not the person that's just drinking day in day out and doesn't care about anybody else but himself but then you know even me saying you don't care about anybody else day in day out it's because they're addicted to the alcohol and people yeah. outside won't see that that's a real addiction. You cannot get rid of it by just shouting at someone and, you know, yeah. and getting angry at somebody. It's, it's interesting you're saying that, that the, the behaviours of the individual, the, the chemicals in your body, the, what the alcohol does, it'll block some of the messages are going through yeah so because those messages are not going through, they'll block it and they'll, they'll say, well, I didn't say that. Mm -hmm. right so they'll be drunk and they'll be sure maybe throwing abuse at the individual maybe even domestic violence but when they become sober they say i didn't do that yeah yeah and they blatantly know that they didn't do it but th that was because the the communication systems in their spinal cord to their brain has been um dulled so much they it's not picking up the signals i think also as well a lot of people who i'm like oh my hands up the ear as well when I used to drink a lot before, I would not get a blackout completely, mm. which is quite okay. Some people don't, but with me, it would be a point and I'm gone and I'll be waking up the next day. What happened? There's no on and off thing here. So you don't know mm. what's going to happen during that time when you do have that blackout. Mm. Anything could happen, you know, and if there was a drug that you could get from the streets that could do that, it wouldn't be like, like marijuana now. The British won't legalise marijuana, but it, it's the same for me. It's exactly the same as alcohol. It's the same effects. Well, alcohol, I think there are different degrees of um, different things. Like, for instance, you could say, well, tea can be addictive, coffee can be addictive. Yep. Um, then alcohol has a, a different sensation of satisfaction. And then what's happening within the the social communities, people are mixing alcohol with drugs. Yep. Yeah. So it's having a, a, another compounded uh, impact on their body. Um, and I think one of the things we need to be saying to the community you really, I mean, one of the things they're saying, we need to educate the community and breweries and, and other organizations are saying we, we educate the community. It's not just about education, it's actually taking action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think government needs to be taking more action around it. Just think of the amount of money that's wasted through alcohol. What I was going to say, yeah, with the NHS, what can, if you got, it's fine saying, what can the Sikh community do about it? Say, for example, what can we say? Can we say now that we need to stop? This whole thing that you're going to have weddings for example now i'll give you an example weddings how many people you know you've got these fancy venues you know you're spending 30 40 thousand pound you can spend all that that you end up a guy drunk and an ambulance will be called and you're thinking what was the whole point of spending yeah. all that money and just somebody collapses and passes away the parents have just wasted that much money on yeah. that and someone just can get completely drunk right i think, well, I Which, think <laughs> but they bring on but then if you say i'm not going to have alcohol at my wedding yeah. could you imagine that you had a party with no alcohol what would be the that'd be great no but imagine the <laughs> what would the parents say what would the families say they'll be saying oh shameful of these families yeah they, they probably say they're all they're being stingy yeah yeah they're being stingy and they didn't even provide alcohol uh when i don't think that is the case really uh yeah. i think the, i think if for instance you're actually looking at the health uh, reasons for not providing because what you're doing by providing alcohol you're actually actually encouraging people to drink poison i think yeah you're right and they've watched to celebrate that i think one of the best weddings i went to was one where there were two um, a number of couple um and it was in birmingham they got married and they just did the godward a bit mm. and the longer yeah and that was it yeah and it yeah. was done it was perfect mm -hmm. you know and i just thought wow and it was it wasn't taxing where you have to wait and then you sit there and you're waiting for your starters and you know the music it was it was just brilliant it was done within a few hours but it was 
special it was just done yeah. normally. But how many more people can we say, oh, yeah, not only that, you're, you're wasting 30, 40, 30, 40,000 pounds on a wedding. When you can spend that, you can give that to the I kids and say, okay, it's a deposit for our Personally, alcohol, my view is, right, you can, have, uh, you can have good time and good socialising without alcohol. I think the key thing is that we, sometimes alcohol is used to make you feel happy. Yep. You don't need alcohol to be happy. I think that is a state of mind that needs to change. And if you can actually change that, you're in a better place, you'll be much healthier, yep. and then you can move forward. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely a good idea. But hopefully we can try to say to the Sikh community and the, and the Sangat out there, and you know, if you've got any problems, do seek help. You know, it's not, it's, not, it's not something that you can just get, you know, get someone off easily. We wish it was like that. But you do need medical help. You do need to make that first step to the GP. You do need mm. to look at online stuff that people can help you online as well. And if you don't want to go via the GP, there's individual programs and a lot of the Sikh charities there now out there that are doing rehabilitation and, and are helping. And hopefully they can do more at Godwaras. I know we're doing talks at Godwaras now and bringing the I effort. You know, it's important happen, that we get yeah. that, you know, on a weekly basis at the Godwaras so that family can go there. And, you know, it's okay that the, the, the person who's drinking the family might not be able to go there, but the family can get the support and the family can look at what's the next step which they wouldn't have been able to do because they might feel embarrassed to go to their local GP. I, I think that the key thing is, first of all, uh, creating that transparency in the community because in the Sikh community there are issues, people are feeling concerned, but I, I'm not too sure if they know which direction to turn. Yep. Yeah, And I think sometimes people feel we get pressurised, we have to provide drinks. No, it is your choice, right? Yep. You don't have to provide drinks. And, and the other thing is I think some people get kind of greedy uh, and alcohol is one of these things that will actually... But now they're even you. saying, oh, which vodka is it? Smirnoff is not good, it's Belvedere, yeah. which is £60. Yeah. They don't want Bacardi, they want this. And you're just thinking, you know, what? You, no. It's alcohol, it's going to go to the system, you're going to get drunk, or, get over it. What you could do is actually have a bar and they have to pay for their own. <laughs> <laughs> and they say, why, why yeah, you but then again, it will go back to the whole family <laughs> and that's the whole thing about, you know... Yeah, but my, I think, I think this, this, this is not... A, um, I think all we can do is raise awareness that alcohol actually is destroying your mind, your yeah. brain, it's actually destroying your liver, it's impacting on your other organs and all of those organs you need in order to survive. Yeah, so I think we're coming to the last last minute now um, of the show. Again, what I would say is, look, alcohol is addiction, it's not something that people think, oh, you know, they can stop and stuff like that. Again, I'm repeating myself again. So if you do need help, please do get help from your GP. Please do look online and find out the charities that do offer rehab, do offer support, Alcoholics Anonymous, um, and there are Sikh charities, even stuff like the Sikh Helpline and stuff like they help mm. with people that are facing those issues. So, and I, would, and I would say that anybody who drinks even a little bit or more or lots, um, even if you say, well, I don't drink and it really doesn't impact on me, what I would suggest that you go to your doctor, get that blood test done to check what your liver's like. Okay. And, also if just and if your liver is something between three and four, then you're kind of okay. But if it's hitting five, you really need to change your lifestyle. That'd be great. Yeah. So at the GP, you do that blood test. So like I say, it's a new show. Every day matters. Um, it's your show. So when you dial in, it's all about you. Um, thanks a lot for all your time. And hopefully you. we'll cover more taboo subjects and important subjects in the community that get okay. put behind. Okay. Thank you and goodbye.